So hi and welcome to, uh, to this video. This time in this video we're going to talk about something that uh, confuses a number of people but actually quite, quite straightforward and simple and that is um, histograms. Now histograms, uh, you know, they appear on the back of all our cameras. Um, we see them a lot, you know, a little chart appears looking a little bit like this and uh, you know, for some people that's really, really useful. Actually, it should be useful for everybody because it is phenomenally easy to understand. And what I'm going to do in this video is explain why it is so easy to understand, how to use it and how it can help you make your, your photographs better by getting the correct exposure. So first of all, um, what is a histogram? Well, a histogram basically shows us the light distribution across your photograph. And it's as simple as that. It shows you where the darkness is, where the lightness is, any bits that may be over or underexposed. So it's really, really, really important that we understand our histograms, obviously. So let's take a look at a blank histogram, and, and here's one now. So on the left-hand side, we have darkness. And this is where all the dark data will start to appear in our image. As we move to the right, and we move through the, through the bottom line of this histogram, we move to light. And that's where the light data, that's where the white information will start to be um, shown in our, in our histogram. And in the middle, we've got every range of colour in between. All the greys and the mid-tones are going to be nicely sort of plonked around the middle. On the vertical axis, axis, not axis, there's no axis in here, it's, all, it's an axis. On the vertical axis, axis we have... Um, we have the amount, the number of pixels that uh, that are that are in that uh, in that kind of light range. So if we've got a totally totally black image like this one, and we overlaid onto it a histogram, and here we go, here's the histogram coming now, then we can just see a vertical line on the left-hand side of the image. That shows us in this histogram that all the data is in the left, is in the dark, and it's absolutely a pitch black image. On the other hand of it, if we flip to the right and we, we present a perfectly white image, then when we put the, the histogram on this image, we'll see all the lines. There's one line, a straight line up on the right hand side, which shows that all the light is in the white part of the image. And that's really where we don't want our, our, um, our, our, our pixels. We don't want them on the extreme left and we don't want them on the extreme right because that's where we risk blowing those, uh, those highlights out or losing detail in the darks and, and the lights. And we, we need to keep that kind of nicely balanced across, uh, across the image. So let's look at an image that's potentially correctly exposed. So here's, here's a photograph of a boat by the river. It's obviously not, um, not where we are today. Um, but uh, so this, this boat is just, just on an estuary and uh, we can see it's, it's, it's not got any super white areas in it and it's not got any, any sort of super black areas. But if we overlay the histogram onto this image, we can see that as the image is predominantly dark, most of the lines, most of the vertical lines are actually on the left hand side of this image. It's just a tail off towards the right as uh, just to, to, to pick up those, um, those highlights. And that's that's, uh, that's uh, the kind of histogram you would expect from this image. Let's pick another one that's maybe a little bit easier to understand. This is a waterfall. And this waterfall has got, um, this is Glencoe actually, up in, uh, up in Scotland. Um, and this waterfall has got some very white areas. The water coming over the edge of the waterfall is, is very white and very bright. There's a few highlights in the, in, the, in the sky, but not very many. It's quite a dark sky. So when we overlay the histogram onto this, we can see there's quite a bit of detail, quite a lot of vertical lines at the very far right, which is, which is going with the water. But consequently, as we move to the left, we can see there's lots of vertical lines that, that move through the mid-tones and then into the dark areas. And the dark areas of the image you can see, um, they're going to have the, 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 um, the vertical lines on the left, showing a lot of pixels in that dark area. Now they say that, you know, to get a good exposure, a good photograph, you're going to need a nice level distribution of, uh, of light across the entire image. That's not always what you're going to want to achieve. In main cases for landscape photography you may well want that nice distribution uh, across the whole image. But sometimes you may actually want dark areas of your image. So for example look at this one. This is a photograph of, uh, of a concert taken recently. Um, and this is a chap called Howard Jones. But uh, in this image there's quite a lot of dark area around the edges of this image because they didn't really want a lot of light. And you can't get a lot of light if you're at a concert. So you will see that there is a lot of of vertical lines stacked up on the left, and that's that black area in the image. But then also there's a graduation and a tail off of light uh, throughout the image, and, and, uh, and you can see the, the lines going through the mid-tones. 
it is really important that you don't get an abundance of light pixels on the far right and the far left because that shows you image basically being blown out on the right you're losing detail in the whites and you're losing detail in the black so you do want all your images to be just in a touch from 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 the uh, from the extremities so you've got all the detail you can work with in the photograph now most of the time your camera will do a pretty good job of taking a photograph. It can work out the exposure itself. It's not stupid. There are very clever electronics in there. However, sometimes it will make that error and you will want to just check your histogram. You've seen it on the back of your camera all the time. This is, this is the back of my camera when I take a photograph and you can see that, um, that I can see I've got the histogram there every single time I take a picture. When I preview a picture, I always have a histogram there so I can check it. But sometimes, if you're letting the camera make some decisions, it will, it will not make, uh, make the right decision. Even though, I mean, I've got a Nikon D850, which is arguably a very good camera, and um, it will still make errors. So, for example, here's a, here's a photograph that I took with my, um, with my camera uh, a few moments ago, and um, it was of a black piece of card. Now, you can see that this picture is actually grey. And what's happened here is the camera has looked at a very black image and tried to work out that actually there must be light in there somewhere so it's put that image as grey and put it in the mid-tone. It's completely screwed it up. So it's always good to check and to check again your histogram to make sure you've got the correct lighting levels. For example, if you're taking a photograph on a very sunny day, you might have your brightness on your LCD monitor turned up and therefore you might not get a true reflection. The, the back of the camera is looking at the picture is not a good way to check your image because if you're in a dark place and you've got your brightness turned up on the LCD screen, it'll look super bright. And you don't want that because actually your, your image actually might be a lot darker than that. Check the histogram. The histogram will show you where that light is distributed. It doesn't need to be a big look. All you're looking for is a nice distribution of, of vertical lines across the middle of that chart. I hope that's helped. Um, it, histograms quite, can be quite complex. They're actually quite simple. So if you've enjoyed this video, please uh, hit the hit one of the buttons down there. Give us a big thumbs up. Leave a comment, or uh, if you like, uh, down in the, this corner down here, just hit that uh, hit that subscribe button, and we'll notify you of any future videos that uh, that are coming along. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please. Uh, Watch again and we'll see you next time. Thank you.